What if I told you that the biggest scam in history is happening right now, and that is a scam that is so big, so audacious, so grand in its lie that the vast majority of people have zero idea that it's even going on? It actually reminds me of this famous con artist, Victor Lustig, who actually sold the Eiffel Tower, yeah, the one in France, twice to scrap metal investors. It was a con that was so big, so crazy, it had to be true, because who would make something like that up? And that is where we are with fiat money, in particular, the US freaking dollar. It may be the most dangerous and the biggest scam in history. I'm gonna explain why in this video. I'm Lark, I make videos on investing. If you like that topic, then do subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up on this video as well if you like this kind of content, and make sure to sign up to my twice weekly cryptocurrency investor newsletter. Our members love it. I'm sure you will too. It's packed full of great information to help you navigate these markets. Sign up using the link down below in the description. Now, let's go ahead and get into this topic, and of course, we have to discuss how the whole money system works. The global banking system basically has been designed to enslave us. Slowly but surely, we are all becoming debt slaves. The banks control the governments, and the governments, they control you. Controlling money is how they have dominated the world. The global elites and the banking cartel members are made up of numerous organizations that all play a part in how money is controlled and how the fiat scam is perpetuated across the globe, and we need to talk about it. So let's talk first about the Federal Fricking Reserve. This is the proverbial head of the snake when it comes to the global dominance of the dollar. Now, it was designed in secret and launched along with the IRS after severe bank runs happened in the early 1900s, primarily due to the lack of faith that American people had in banks. Well-placed lack of faith, may I add. And it was J.P. Morgan. Yeah, J.P. Morgan, the J.P. Morgan, the guy who started the world's most criminal bank and several other major bankers at the time who loaned the U.S. government $23 million to get the New York Stock Exchange back to work. Soon after, a National Monetary Commission was actually founded to lay the blueprint for the Federal Reserve Act back in 1913. That was the beginning of the end for the dollar. This is the year that money changed forever. This gave complete monetary control of the US dollar to a boardroom full of bankers, and it removed it from the control of the US Treasury. Bad idea. With decisions then being made at the Fed not requiring any approval from a government or from a president. The Fed thus is tasked with protecting the entire financial banking system, or more adequately put, manipulating that system. And it's pretty easy to do when you have an unlimited supply of money, right? The Federal Reserve prints every single dollar in existence. They create economic instability by overprinting money. They create the booms and the busts. Then the banks, of course, will come out, the commercial banks come out and lobby the government to print more money to bail them out when things go wrong. It's the largest financial scam in history perpetrated against humans of this planet, stealing the value of the nation with each dollar printed. And it's no secret that the Federal Reserve has failed, or perhaps from their view, succeeded perfectly in robbing the world with a hundred years of data clearly showing the failure of this system. And the Federal Reserve balance sheet, it just keeps going up with no stop while disposable income for regular people keeps Falling. Next, we need to talk about the international arm of the criminal banking syndicate working with the Federal Reserve to control monetary policy and enslave countries to debt slavery. And that's the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Now, the IMF is made up of top officials from each country's central bank or finance ministry. This is where all the banks in the world get together to discuss how they will remain in control of the money supply. The IMF has made a reputation for itself as a predatory loan agency that basically lends money out to in-debt countries to globalist banks, while also putting in all these clauses with those loans that strip a country of its natural and public resources. Then, of course, we have the World Economic Forum. Yeah, those guys, and they are, yet again, another group of bankers and financial elites who meet to decide what they want to do with our money. Telling us we should own nothing and be happy. Well, you know, Klaus Schwab and all of his cronies, they will not be happy until they own everything, and part of that ownership comes through the manipulation of the global money supply. And let's not forget about the World Bank. That's another arm of the banking machine that works with developing countries to indebt its citizens into economic development and loans as a, basically a front to try to reduce poverty, but actually it ends up perpetuating poverty because of the 
structures of these loans. The World Bank ends up taking advantage of countries who are going through tough times economically, and they offer to bail out these governments in exchange, of course, for greater monetary control of that nation's currency. And then there is the Bank of International Settlements, which was founded back in 1930 by the creators of the Federal Reserve. This was done to ensure that their reign and their control of monetary policy globally was persistent across the world. And as the name implies, the BIS, Bank of International Settlements, it's the central bank for central banks. Decisions made at the IMF, the ECB, the Fed, the WEF, the BOE, they all run through the Bank of International Settlements. This is the bank's piggy bank, where huge amounts of wealth and power are being funneled to the wealthiest people on this planet. This is the agency where shadowy banking families and shadowy banking cartels remain in control of the world's money, safely managing foreign exchange reserves from their tower up on high. This is the banking institution's biggest proponent, by the way, as well of the implementation of central bank digital currencies, the newest and greatest financial threat to humanity, which is being cooked up by globalists and we fully programmable digital money with scary implications. The outline is clear. Create more and more debt so that the banking cartels can print more and more money. This is all part of how fractional reserve banking works, is how the fiat system works. One of the most valuable tools in a bank's arsenal is its ability to steal money from a nation without that nation even knowing. That's inflation, that's debt, and it's done by compounding debt on top of debt on top of debt. Most economies are ruled by debt. Since all the money, of course, is being printed out of thin air. The debt ends up being more just numbers on paper than actual physical ownership of tangible goods or services. And then of course, the fractional reserve banking system means that only some of the money that exists in all of the bank accounts is actually backed by physical cash that can actually be withdrawn. Something like a, a measly 10% in the USA. Thus banks take the other 90% of your money and lend it out to anyone that they deem worthy. Meaning that every dollar in your bank account is not actually your money, it becomes the bank's money. Of course, it's all the bank's money anyway at the end of the day, isn't it? The fiat system is a scam. It's a fugazi. It's a system designed to enslave everyone via debt and to impoverish everyone via inflation. And all the while, this criminal banking cartel manipulates the supply of money to their advantage, massively enriching themselves and impoverishing everyone else. Fiat money only has value because we give it value. It's actually backed by nothing. Most people don't even realize this. There's no gold backing up the dollar. There's no resources backing up the dollar. Just a trust me bro from the government. It's insanity. But this era of USD fiat dominance could be coming to an end. And when it does, we probably have just three choices of what comes next. The first is CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. It's a truly Orwellian evolution of modern fiat and criminal banking practices combined with technological totalitarianism. Option two, the BRICS money. This is a proposal by the BRICS group, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, other members coming on board, basically to have a commodity backed currency backed by things like gold, silver, oil, as well as potentially member state fiat. Kind of ish a return to hard money, if you will. That would be a bit of a shock to the financial system if it actually grows into a global status. Remains to be seen, but still government issued money. And option three, of course, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only currency of freedom in the world right now. It's the only free market economic money. All the other options are just extensions of failed central banking system policies. All benefits the banks. We deserve a free currency, not a currency controlled by monetary mechanisms that are used as financial weapons. Bitcoin is the only truly free money in the world. It's free from the banking cartels, the influence of them. They can't manipulate it. It's free from censorship and it's available to literally anyone, anywhere in the world. It's incredibly powerful. Unlike the central bank trash, of course, Bitcoin has also a reliable math-based economic system versus just, we're gonna print more money whenever we feel like it. Bitcoin is your chance to opt out of this dollar debt slavery system. And by continuing to participate in that system, we just continue feeding it. It's also important to educate your children about money and Bitcoin because by educating our children about financial slavery, about what is actually the fiat system, we can actually change the course of history. Remember, Bitcoin is freedom money. That's just a plain and simple statement. It is the separation of money and state and it's the separation of money and bank, which is why I will keep accumulating 
Bitcoin, rain or shine. By the way, the information in this video, I think is pretty important. So if you believe that it is, then please help me by sharing this video with friends, family, on social media, so more people can kind of understand what the heck is happening in this crazy fiat banking system. Anyway, let me know what you think about all this down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.